Blessings, greetings. Always wonderful to see your beautiful faces. Yes, and so again, a reminder, in uh, two weeks, we'll have our, our next retreat, May 31st through June 2nd. And after that, uh, we'll have a retreat at uh, Kripalu in person, July 14th through the 19th. So I hope you can join. Okay. Let me just see who's here today. And yeah. Okay. All right, give me a minute, please, because uh, there's one more person that was supposed to come. Doesn't look like they made it in the room. I was hoping they would come. Okay, so anyways, we'll see if they show up. So one of the things I was hoping to speak about today is fear. Fear is something that everyone on the path of awakening has to face. And often the fear shows up in a, a convoluted way. Because initially when the energy wakes up in our nervous system, when it wakes up in our body and it begins to rush and it begins to flow, our body unconsciously, mistakenly, our body, because it is a, um, how should I say this? It's, it's a gross instrument. And by gross, I don't mean like dirty or sick, but gross as opposed to subtle. And the gross instrument of the body, body, the gross instrumentation within the body interprets this rush of energy as fear. And many of us, we live with this chronic state of fear, which if we looked at it from a subtler lens, we would see that the body's living in a chronic, chronic state of energy activation, of energy activation. And that this energy is not fear at all. But for most everyone, they just get stuck in this initial wave of energy. And they call it fear because it's something they don't understand. It kind of feels like fear when a lot of energy moves through your body at once. And so we interpret it as fear. And then we respond the way you know, we've always responded to fear. Which is shutting down, clamping down and resisting it. And when we're on a path of spiritual awakening, we have to be willing to look at everything in our experience. To look at it and to say, what is the truth of this? What is the truth of this? Like, do I need to be frightened? of this thing I'm calling fear, which is really just energy. Do I need to be frightened of this thing? Do I need to respond the way I would respond to a, um, I don't know, a, a grizzly bear? Like a lot of times, you know, the, the teaching is if, <laughs> if you're getting attacked by a grizzly bear, they tell you to get in the ground and roll up like a ball. And, um, <laughs> and so like, that's like the ultimate contraction, the ultimate contraction. Uh, now me, I don't have grizzly bears where I live. I've, I have just black bears, brown bears, sometimes tan bears, sometimes they're blonde <laughs> bears. 
And uh, so when I see a bear, I'm not curling up in a ball and seeing what that thing does. I'm going to raise my hands. I'm going to become a bear. I'm going to go, Arr, you know, and when I do that, you know, the bear, it always runs away. Now, the only time I wouldn't do that is if I'm in between the mama and her cup. And, and I've, I've been in that situation, too, as I've gotten in between the two. And I quickly get out of the way. I get out of the way. Do a little Aikido. Getting out of the way. And so with fear, we need to learn first to see, like, just from a Zen-like place of reality, is there any danger? My mind, my body is telling me there's danger, is telling me I need to contract. And, and just right there in that moment, we need to stand in the truth and ask, is it true that I need to contract? Is it true? It doesn't appear that anything's coming to get me. And so I'm not going to contract. I'm not going to contract. I'm going to do the Aikido game, which is to get out of the way and let the energy flow. And when you get out of the way of this thing that we interpret, misinterpret as fear, we get out of the way and watch it flow. You begin to see, oh, it's just energy. And it's a lot of energy. And what if I open to this energy? What if I open to it? And my God, if people on this path of Kundalini awakening could do this one thing, could do this one thing of just get out of the way and let energy flow, our experience and our relationship with Kundalini would be so different. So different. So different. It would be quite incredible. Quite incredible. But instead, many of us, we interpret something as fear. And maybe the Kundalini is bringing up an old fear. That's another thing that Kundalini does. Is a Kundalini, one, it's just energy, so that we need to be clear about that. Kundalini is not fear. And it's nothing we need to be afraid of. But sometimes Kundalini does do a spring cleaning with us. And, this, and during a spring cleaning, it's going to clean out our closets. You know, we all know about having skeletons in the closet. And so Kundalini is going to clean, clean out the closet, going to bring those things into the light. And again, it's important to have discernment, sophisticated discernment, an upgraded spiritual discernment, which says, oh, yes, I have these skeletons. But they're skeletons. <laughs> they're skeletons. They're not real and they're not happening anymore. They're no longer happening. And so I get to choose how to respond to these skeletons. And of course, in this path, in this lineage, I'm always going to invite us to respond with love and strength. Love and strength. And strength really is love. A lot of people think that love is this sweet, gushy thing that just allows everything to overwhelm us and that we just need to respond like a bunny rabbit to every, you know, to every experience we have just with just sweet, cuddly energy. Sometimes we need to look at our skeletons and say, no, no, you're not the truth now and you weren't the truth at the time. <laughs> and so now I'm choosing to set a boundary, I'm choosing to release you. I'm choosing to let these skeletons come out to the light and to turn to dust. And to turn to dust. And the great force of Kundalini, the great force of this energy, the Shakti, that's one of its abilities is to turn the past to dust. But too many people, too many individuals, I'm going to pick on you a little bit personally, within this Sangha, are just afraid and respond with fear and let fear rule them. At some point, we have to take ownership of this path. We have to take ownership of our life. 
and say, I want a new way. And in order to have a new way, we have to surrender our old way of habitually fearing, of habitually saying, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm confused. I'm a victim. You don't understand. My life has been too hard. The problem is, it's a real problem, I do understand. And the problem is, is I see that many of you, some of you who aren't here, be listening at a later date, <laughs> are just holding on to your past, are holding on to that old way of being. This is a path of awakening, a path that destroys, destroys, our old, fearful, gross, again, gross as opposed to so, our gross system of discernment. It's not even discernment. It's just like unconsciously we experience anything that looks like fear and our body goes into panic, goes into fear, it goes into shutdown, it goes into contraction. That needs to be destroyed. That reactivity needs to be destroyed. Could a greater force, a force that is calm and can look at the situation and make a decision. And make a decision. Again, I'm, I'm going to tell this story again. I've told it too many times, but I'm going to tell it again. I was once, you know, just down, actually like three blocks from my house here down like walking on a river trail once after teaching satsang. You know, I, was I used to teach here uh, in this little, this little class. And I overlooked the river and after the class I was walking home and there was a big bear that was walking on the river trail and he was coming at me and I saw him and he saw me. And I said, either you're gonna move or I'm gonna move. And he said, okay, I'm going to move. <laughs> he just climbed the fence and jumped, you know, got out of my way, walked down by the river, let me pass, and then, you know, went on doing his thing. We have to have this relationship with fear. Either the fear is going to rule us, or we are going to rule over fear. And in the realm of spiritual awakening, there can't be anything we're afraid of. And it's going to require great courage for us to look at what's here, to face what's here, to embrace what's here with love, but with strength as well. Again, I really upset someone the other day because they wanted me to respond with gentleness, gentleness, gentleness. And sometimes I have to respond with, with firmness. And sometimes it has to be really firm. Sometimes I have to be very firm with people. And people are taken aback. They're, they're aghast. It's like, what is he doing? It's like, I'm showing you firm love. I'm showing you it's important to be strong on this path. We cannot just complain and just indefinitely. Then I become a teacher who enables. I become, you know, a support person who enables, and I'm not going to be that person. But there's this thing that, that I run into every now and then. Every now and then, I'll be very firm with someone. And their ego, their ego will be like, no. No, <laughs> no, and it'll show me this really nasty aspect of the ego where it starts to hunker down and really fight and really resist and argue and then attack the person who's trying to help them. And this just happened the other day. And, and, you know, it's always shocking to me when it happens. And one of the beautiful things that the ego does, and, and all of us have had this experience, I've had this experience, so don't act like I'm saying I haven't done this before, where our ego, like I can remember so many times in relationship, 
my partner, my wife, girlfriend, whoever, my mother, you know, my father would say to me, you did this. And I did do that thing. And I'd be like, no, I didn't. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> no, I didn't. You did it. And the ego plays this game. I'm not projecting. You're projecting. I'm not confused. You're confused. The ego does this turn where it goes really dark. And it has to lie to itself so intensely. To hold on to a seed of righteousness, to protect itself, to protect its worldview. Because it's so scared to let go and admit, oh yeah, I am doing that. I am resisting. I am lying. I am going into whatever my defense strategy is. For some people, their defense strategy, you know, to me, it's hilarious. It's, I'm confused. I'm confused. I'm confused. My defense strategy is, you know, I'm a nine on the uh, Enneagram, uh, in the Enneagram worldview is to just go to sleep. Uh, maybe I'll just take a nap and when I wake up, it'll be gone. <laughs> That's the nines. The eights is I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight with you. I'm going to fight. The threes is, you know, like, I'm just going to ignore all my emotion and just strive to the future and try to have some kind of success. And, you know, the seven is I'm just going to play and have fun. I'm just going to ignore this. I'm going to play and have fun. And so we have to be discerned. We have to really look at like, how does my ego respond to stress? How does it respond to fear? Because the, the way that our ego responds to fear almost always is a lie. You know, to be polite, we could call it a coping mechanism, but most coping mechanisms are a lie. Like the coping mechanism that, you know, almost all humanity has Right now is a smartphone. It's just like, oh, something stressful. Let's start scrolling on something. Let's fill our mind with the news. Let's worry about Trump and his trial and all that kind of thing. Let's get out of our life and into some virtual life, some virtual world as a way of avoiding. But the great truth with Kundalini is Kundalini is here to show you that you are a goddess, that you are a Buddha, that you are something great. That you are something great. And Kundalini Shakti wants you to open into something great. And for some of us, that doorway into opening beyond fear will be a doorway of courage. And that's like the most common one is we, we have to find some courage. And sometimes it's just a willingness to stand in the fear and let it burn and burn and burn and burn and burn. Like I had fear once that burnt for 18 months. But after nine months of it burning, I realized, oh, this isn't fear. This is just light. It's just light. It's just light. It's just light. And not only is it just light as opposed to fear, it's my light. This is the light that I am. This is the light that God is. This is the light that creation is. And the recognition of that gave this great smile. I can be this light. I am this light. I am not that fearful, guarded ego. But some people choose. And, you know, it, it happens just in my professions. I have to challenge people. They choose to identify basically with a contracted ego and say, this is what I am. You don't understand me. <laughs> and I do understand you. I understand you more than you understand yourself. That's the problem with being with the awakened one, is they understand you. When I was with my teacher, he knew me better than I knew myself. Very frustrating for my ego. But I knew, I knew he was right. And I was honest enough. I had enough integrity to admit, you're right. I am being an idiot. I'm contracting and I'm fearing around something I don't need to. I'm going into an old habit. I've taken on a defensive stance. 
I've made a big story about how the other person is wrong and how I am right. My teacher would point this out, often on a daily basis. And he was right. Every single time. <laughs> Every single time. He was right. It's a brutal relationship to be in because I couldn't hide in my ego. And some people want to be on this path. They want to show up in the song and they say, I just want it all to end, Craig. If you truly want it to end, you'll follow the teachings. But what most people really want is they just want to feel better. But in this world, this is not a world just to come and feel better. This is a world where you are being challenged to stand in your goddess nature, to stand in Buddha nature. Buddha's life was not about feeling better. His life was about the truth. And a byproduct of living in the truth is you do end up feeling pretty good. <laughs> you do end up feeling ultimately much, much better. But in the short term, if we want short-term happiness, go with the ego. Let's all get some brownies and some ice cream and you know, maybe a warm day on the beach. But if we want long-term happiness, we must, must invest in long-term truth. And so I'm going to invite us right now just to close down our eyes and to feel into the body. And I'm going to invite you just to reflect. Reflect upon your relationship with fear. And reflect upon how you react to fear what your go-to egoic reaction is in regards to fear. And I invite you to smile a little bit. <laughs> you know, I have a little humility smile. Like I can smile. And, you know, when I have something really challenging, sometimes I want to go to sleep. But for some of us, we want to eat. Some of us, we want to internet shop. Some of us, we want to run. Some of us, we go on the offensive. I invite you to smile at your egoic defensiveness. Some of you, it may say, I don't know. I don't know what to do. We all know what to do. And so I want you to breathe deeply into your heart, into your body. And allow the truth to present itself. The truth. So if there's someone we need to love, if there's something we need to forgive, can we invite it into the light? And so I'm inviting you to look deeply at your relationship with fear. Is there someone you need to love? Is there an aspect of yourself you need to love? Is there something that needs a boundary? Is there someone, something that needs to be forgiven? Do we need to find the courage the courage that we did not know we had. And so again, we breathe, we feel, we soften. trust. We trust that love is the way. Truth is the way. Strength is the way.
strength is the way. And for some of us, the very reason why God floods our body with fear is so that you may discover the strength that's within you that's been buried for lifetimes. Sometimes the very reason the divine intelligence gives us a hard life is because God is teaching us about strength. And so let us continue to breathe and feel and soften and notice it. Noticing where are the places that I fear? What are the doors that I keep locked tight? What resentments do I need to let go of? What anger or rage do I need to embrace? Can I meet it all with love? With love. With love. So breathing, feeling, softening, and trusting. Love is the way. Strength is the way. Love is the way. Strength is the way. opening to fear, letting it flow. And seeing, seeing the reality of fear. It's just energy. The reality of Kundalini, just energy. Just energy. Can I get out of the way and let it flow? And as a result, I become strong, I become courageous, I become awake to what truly is. It's so beautiful. You can gently open your eyes and I welcome you into this space.